I'm going to read this whole passage. I believe it's a very important turning point in a church's life when they enter into the experience of Romans chapter 14. Accept him whose faith is weak without passing judgment on disputable matters. One man's faith allows him to eat everything, but another man whose faith is weak eats only vegetables. The man who eats everything must not look down on him who does not. And the man who does not eat everything must not condemn the man who does, for God has accepted him. Who are you to judge someone else's servant? To his own master he stands or falls, and he will stand, for the Lord is able to make him stand. One man considers one day more sacred than another. Another man considers every day alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. He who regards one day as special does so for the Lord, and he who eats meat eats for the Lord, for he gives thanks to God. And he who abstains does so for the Lord and gives thanks to God, for none of us lives for himself alone, and none of us dies to himself alone. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord." For this very reason, Christ died and returned to life, so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. Why then, you then, why do you judge your brother? Or why do you look down on your brother? For we will all stand before the God's judgment seat. It is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me and every tongue will confess to God. So then each of us will give an account to, of himself to God. Therefore, let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up your mind not to put any stumbling block or obstacle in your brother's way. As one who is in the Lord Jesus, I am fully convinced that no food is unclean in itself. But if anyone regards something as unclean, then for him it is unclean. And if your brother is distressed because of what you eat, you're no longer acting in love. Do not, by your eating, destroy your brother for whom Christ died. And do not allow what you consider good to be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and approved by men. Therefore, let us make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All food is clean, but it's wrong for a man to eat anything that causes someone else to stumble. It's better not to eat meat or drink or drink wine or to do anything else that will cause your brother to fall. So whatever you believe about these things, keep between yourself and God, and blessed is the man who does not condemn himself by what he approves. For the man who has doubts is condemned if he eats, because his eating is not from faith, and everything that does not come from faith is sin. In Romans uh, chapters, 1 through 13, we are given the essentials of the faith. We're given the absolute self-evident truths of Scripture. In Romans chapter 1, we learn about the deity of Christ. In chapter 3, we're told that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. In chapter 5, we're reminded that we're saved by grace through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. In chapter 8, the ministry of the Spirit is given. In chapter 9, 
We learn about God's plan for Israel in chapter 12, his plan for the church, in chapter 13, his plan for government. So these are the essential truths that we all accept in the first chapters of Romans. And he concludes by giving us the essential truths of the ethics we all accept. And so in chapter 13, at the end of the chapter, we read in verse 12, The night is nearly over, the day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Romans chapter 13, verse 13, Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ. Do not, do not think about how to gratify the desires of your sinful nature. You know, in history we're, t- we're told that there was a man by the name of Augustine who had a sordid past. And one day he was in a garden after his mother had prayed for him for years, and he heard someone over a wall say, pick up and read, pick up and read. And he picked up and he read Romans 13, 13 and 14. Let us behave decently as in the day, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery. Rather, clothe yourself with Christ and don't learn how to gratify the desires of the sinful nature. And Augustine was converted to Christ through those verses. And later he described it in his famous book, The Confessions. And so these are the self-evident, absolute truths of morality that we find at the end of Romans chapter 13. But we turn a corner as we come into Romans 14. Because now we move away from that which is absolutely true to that which is disputable, that which is debated, that which different Christians disagree on. And this is a whole new area. It's a whole new topic. And one of the observations I've made is that some churches can never make this turn. Some churches think that everything is black and white. Some think that everything, there's a right and wrong, even with things beyond Scripture. And so they don't allow for a healthy debate and dialogue This word disputable means to dialogue, to talk through with one another. No, there's just a rigid stance. And some of these areas of disputable issues that I've observed through the days are things like gambling. Is gambling absolutely wrong? Some believe it's absolutely wrong to gamble. Others believe that You can buy a lottery ticket or you can gamble a little bit. You don't want to be consumed by it. Alcoholic drinks. Some people believe that it's okay to drink, never to drunkenness, only very carefully, recognizing the danger. Others say, no, drinking alcohol destroys people's lives. We can't have anybody in our church drinking alcohol. Another area of dispute is divorce. Some people say there's absolutely no reason for divorce and remarriage, period. Others say that Jesus gave provision that if your mate is unfaithful, and you are faithful, then you reconciliation really isn't possible, then there can be a divorce and a remarriage. And others would add 1 Corinthians 7 that if the, someone abandons the family, The one who's abandoned can remarry. Others say that if a divorce happened before you were saved and the blood of Christ cleansed you from all of that, then you can remarry after your conversion. There's debate on this subject. There's dispute. Good Christians disagree. On baptism, some believe that baptism in water by immersion is the only legitimate way to baptize. Others would say, well... The way you baptize a person, whether it's by immersion or by sprinkling, they would debate that that would be okay. 
I think you get the picture. Down through history, there's been debate over cosmetics. Can women wear cosmetics? Can we, go to, can we watch TV? Can we go to movies? What's the woman's role? Is rock and roll wrong? Is it wrong to drink caffeine? I mean, it just goes on and on and on. There's all these debatable issues. Well, here in Romans 14, there's two areas of debate that Paul is addressing. One is that some Christians believe they could not eat meat that had been sacrificed to an idol, and others said it was okay. And apparently some perhaps even said that if you couldn't eat a food that was breaking the Jewish kosher laws, and others said, well, those laws are finished. And the other area of debate was the Sabbath. Some said that a good Christian was, would, must still honor the Sabbath. And others said, no, every day is alike. And so these were the two areas of debate. Now what's interesting is, is that Paul here in this passage does not focus the whole chapter on giving us the biblical truth on food and the biblical truth on the Sabbath. He doesn't list all the verses. He doesn't give us all the theological truths. He doesn't do that. What he does is he shows us that when it comes to these areas of dispute, more important than being right is having a right relationship with your brother and sister. While we continue being a benevolent project, your kind donations will continue to be vital in fulfilling the calling of TVS ministry. We do count on your gracious support and cooperation. For detailed information, please visit tvsseminary.com.